We are back now with former mayor of Houston, Anise Parker. Welcome back. Thank you. So when you were elected, we talked a little bit before the show today, but when you were elected mayor of Houston, not only were you the city's second female mayor, but you also became one of the first openly gay mayors in a major U.S. city. Were you surprised that when you won the election, it got so much worldwide attention? I, I was stunned. I'd already been elected six times citywide in Houston by the time I became mayor, and I, I was used to it, Houstonians were used to it, but then when it, when it did garner worldwide media coverage, it was either lesbian mayor of Houston or Houston. How, how did this happen in Houston? And it really gave me an opportunity to talk about what a cool city Houston is and how diverse it is and, and you know, open-minded and tolerant and, and cosmopolitan. Yeah, do you think that that shows that a lot of people in other states maybe have an opinion of Houston that is totally upside down? Yes, absolutely. And I think for a long time, Houstonians really didn't care uh, what the rest of the world thought of them. We were, people were moving here, business was good. And it, it's, it's not that Houston became cool when, when I was elected, but they started to look at Houston in a different way. And so all of a sudden, we started popping up on best of lists that we never would have before. You know, coolest city by Forbes or, uh, you know, uh, City of the Year with uh, Fast Company Magazine, those sorts of things. You made us the coolest city in Forbes I, Magazine. I didn't is... make us the coolest. We were. Oh. I, just, I just kind of brought the spotlight down here. What do you think it is about Houston that allows people to gravitate to it? Obviously, there's oil and gas industry here, but there also seems to be a mindset here that you just sort of described, this open, cool factor. People, people move for jobs. So we have had a better economy than most of the rest of the United States for a long time. We have a really high quality of life, a much lower cost of living than other major cities. So you put those three things together, we're a magnet. But the other thing that people don't realize is the majority of Houstonians started life somewhere else. I, I was born and, and reared here as were my parents. Yeah, public school but, girl. But the rest, the, most of Houston came from somewhere else and one in four Houstonians is foreign born. So they bring different cultures and ideas and traditions, and somehow we all blend it together and, uh, to make a greater whole. When you first ran for city council, was that back in 2004, like 12 years ago? Oh, city council oh, was uh, 97, 97. Late 90s, of course. So when you were in the middle of that race, clearly uh, your wife, Kathy, now, you've been together for 23 years, I understand. 26 years. We were. We were married three years ago on our 23rd anniversary. Congratulations. A Palm Springs wedding. Yes. I'm a little upset I wasn't invited. But, but when you were first running for city council, oh, there's a photo of your wedding day. You both look yes. fantastic. And um, by the way, we should mention that not only have Anise and Kathy been together for 26 years now, you also have a bunch of children. You have three daughters and one son. Yes. And they are racially diverse. Oh, yes. They're adopted. And I am so curious to know about this beautiful family we're seeing a photo of right now. How do you find time to be a mom when you are still involved in so many things? Well, first of all, we, when, when, when you take in older kids, they get old in a hurry. So, <laughs> so all, of our, all, all of our kids were, were, were older when they came to live with us. But it's, it's a matter about, of setting priorities and making time. And our son is now 40, and he came to us when he was 16, so it was a long time ago, well before I, I was in politics. And for the girls, uh, we adopted them uh, as I was running for controller. So most of the time when they were younger, not, not really young, uh, I was in an administrative post where I got to go home at the end of the day. It made a big difference. I could not have done it. As mayor. I, I, a mayor is a, really an all-consuming job. And by the way, when you say that your oldest son, who came to you when he was 16, he came to you because he was a homeless boy on the street after being kicked out of his house for being gay. His parents kicked him out. You took him in and gave him a house key. Yes. Th that's the short <laughs> the short. I mean, I think that yeah. says a lot about your character and the type of, of woman that you are. Looking ahead, 
Hillary may become the first female president of the United States. Obviously, you, you know, you I'm, don't I'm, have... I'm doing the happy dance <laughs> in, in anticipation. I'm, I'm sure hoping. you are. You, I mean, I don't have to be a female to believe that women should make the same amount of money as men. Um, someone doesn't have to be gay or a racial minority to believe that everyone deserves equal treatment under the law. As far as we've come, we still have a ways to go, though in terms of many, many issues. So, so what do you see as one of the most critical issues facing Houstonians still? Oh, we've, we've segued from national politics to, to, to local politics. It, it all comes down to the dignity of work and the ability to make a living and jobs in the economy, whether we're talking nationally or locally. And the biggest impediment for the city of Houston has been the fact that we had an out of control pension system. Uh, I, Bill White did yeoman's work on it uh, when he was mayor. I made a little progress when I was mayor. And uh, I really hope that Mayor Turner is able to turn that around and you know, bring our pension costs into alignment so then we can actually invest in the city in the, the way the city deserves. Because a, a city is a platform on which people build their lives. And uh, by providing the appropriate level of, of services, affordable services to our citizens, we allow the, the continued growth and expansion that, that we've enjoyed over the last uh, few decades. The only thing I would say on the horizon, because we're a big car-centric city and we have all the refineries in our immediate area, we're going to have to watch that we keep an eye on, on uh, air quality issues and make sure that... Uh, uh, you, can, you can see those vistas of downtown from Absolutely. all parts of the city. Well, and in the meantime, good luck teaching your class at Rice University. I understand you just spoke at Texas A&M, which is also really great. Anise Parker, thank you so much.